143, all glory, laud, and honor, number 143, and at this time, please turn and face the entrance of the church. sisters, since the beginning of Lent until now, we have prepared our hearts by penance and charitable works. Today we gather together to herald with the whole church the beginning of the celebration of our Lord's Paschal Mystery, that is to say, of his passion and resurrection. For it was to accomplish this mystery that he entered his own city of Jerusalem. And therefore, with all faith and devotion, let us commemorate the Lord's entry into the city for our salvation, following in his footsteps so that being made by his grace partakers of the cross, we may have a share also in his resurrection and in his life. Holding the branches in our hands for blessing, let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, sanctify these branches with your blessing, that we who follow Christ the King in exaltation may reach the eternal Jerusalem through him, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus and his disciples drew near Jerusalem to Bethpage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village opposite you, and immediately on entering it, you will find a colt tethered on which no one has sat. Untie it and bring it here. And if anyone should say to you, Why are you doing this? Reply, the master has need of it, and he will send it back here at once. And so they went off and found a colt tethered at the gate outside, and they untied it. And some of the bystanders said to them, What are you doing untying the colt? They answered just as Jesus had told them to, and they permitted them to do it. And so they brought the colt to Jesus and put their cloaks over it, and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road. Others spread leafy branches. They had cut from the trees and feel. Those preceding him as well as those following kept crying out, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the kingdom of our father David that is to come. Hosanna in the highest. 
the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Let us go forth now to the altar of God, joyfully acclaiming Christ the King, as did those who welcomed him to Jerusalem. example of humility for the human race to follow, caused our Savior to take flesh and submit to the cross, graciously grant that we may heed its lesson of patient suffering, and so merit a share in his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, 
God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord God has given me a well-trained tongue that I might know how to speak to the weary, a word that will rouse them. Morning after morning, he opens my ear that I may hear, and I have not rebelled, have not turned back. I gave my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who plucked my beard, my face I did not shield from buffets and spitting. The Lord God is my help, therefore I am not disgraced. I have set my face like flint, knowing that I shall not be put to shame. The word of the Lord. St. Paul 
to the Philippians. Christ Jesus, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, coming in human likeness, and found human in appearance. He humbled himself, become obedient, becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bend of those in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. According to Mark. The Passover and the Feast of Unleavened Bread were to take place in two days' time. So the chief priests and the scribes were seeking a way to arrest him by treachery and put him to death. They said, Not during the festival, but fear that there may be a riot among the people. When he was in Bethany, reclining at table in the house of Simon the leper, a woman came with an alabaster jar of perfumed oil, costly, genuine spikenard. She broke the alabaster jar and poured it on his head. There were some who were indignant. Why has there been this waste of perfumed oil? It could have been sold for more than 300 days' wages and the money given to the poor. They were infuriated with her. Jesus said, Let her alone. Why do you make trouble for her? She has done a good thing for me. The poor you will always have with you, and whenever you wish, you can do good to them, but you will not always have me. She has done what she could. She has anticipated anointing my body for burial. Amen, I say to you, wherever the gospel is proclaimed to the whole world, what she has done will be told in memory of her. Then Judas Iscariot, one of the twelve, went off to the chief priests to hand him over to them. When they heard him, they were pleased and promised to pay him money. Then he looked for an opportunity to hand him over. On the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, when they sacrificed the Passover lamb, his disciples said to him, Where do you want us to go and prepare for you to eat the Passover? He sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the city, and a man will meet you carrying a jar of water. Follow him. Wherever he enters, say to the master of the house, the teacher says, Where is my guest room, where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? And then he will show you a large upper room, furnished and ready. Make the preparations for us there. The disciples went off, entered the city, and found it just as he had told them. And they prepared the Passover. When it was evening, he came with the twelve. And as they reclined at table and were eating, Jesus said, 
Amen, I say to you, one of you will betray me. One who is eating with me. They began to be distressed and to say to him, one by one, Surely it is not I. He said to them, One of the twelve, the one who dips with me into the dish. For the Son of Man indeed goes, as is written of him, but woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would be better for that man if he had never been born. While they were eating, he took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to them, and said, Take it. This is my body. Then he took a cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, and they all drank from it. He said to them, This is my blood of the covenant which will be shed for many. Amen, I say to you, I shall not drink again of the fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. Then, after singing a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus said to them, All of you will have your face shaken, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep will be dispersed. But after I have been raised up, I shall go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him, Even though all should have their face shaken, mine will not be. Then Jesus said to him, Amen, I say to you, this very night before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. But he vehemently replied, Even though I should have to die with you, I will not deny you. And they all spoke similarly. Then they came to a place named Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. He took with him Peter, James, and John, and began to be troubled and distressed. Then he said to them, My soul is sorrowful even to death. Remain here and keep watch. He advanced a little and fell to the ground and prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass by him. He said, Abba, Father, all things are possible to you. Take this cup away from me, but not what I will, but what you will. When he returned, he found them asleep. He said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not keep watch for one hour? Watch and pray that you may not undergo the test. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Withdrawing again, he prayed, saying the same thing. Then he returned once more and found them asleep, for they could not keep their eyes open and did not know what to answer him. He returned a third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? It is enough. The hour has come. Behold, the Son of Man is to be handed over to sinners. Get up, let us go. See, my betrayer is at hand. Then, while he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived accompanied by a crowd with swords and clubs who had come from the chief priests, the scribes and the elders. His betrayer had arranged a signal with them, saying, The man I shall kiss is the one. Arrest him and lead him away securely. He came and immediately went over to him and said, Rabbi. And he kissed him. At this, they laid hands on him and arrested him. One of the bystanders drew his sword, struck the high priest's servant, and cut off his ear. Jesus said to them in reply, Have you come out as against a robber with swords and clubs to seize me? Day after day I was with you teaching in the temple area, yet you did not arrest me, but that the scriptures may be fulfilled. And they all left him and fled. Now a young man followed him, wearing nothing but a linen cloth about his body. They seized him, but he left the cloth behind and ran off naked. They led Jesus away to the high priest, and all the chief priests and the elders and the scribes came together. Peter followed him at a distance into the high priest's courtyard and was seated with the guards, warming himself at the fire. The chief priests and the entire Sanhedrin kept trying to obtain testimony against Jesus in order to put him to death, but they found none. Many gave false witness against him, but their testimony did not agree. Some took the stand and testified falsely against him, alleging, I heard him say, I will destroy this temple made with hands. Within three days, I will build another not made with hands. 
Even so, their testimony did not agree. The high priest rose before the assembly and questioned Jesus, saying, Have you no answer? What are these men testifying against you? But he was silent and answered nothing. Again the high priest asked him and said to him, Are you the Christ, the Son of the Blessed One? Then Jesus answered, I am. And you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power and coming with the clouds of heaven. At that, the high priest tore his garments and said, What further need have we of witnesses? You have heard the blasphemy. What do you think? They all condemned him as deserving to die. Some began to spit on him. They blindfolded him and struck him and said to him, Prophesy. And the guards greeted him with blows. While Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the high priest's maids came along. Seeing Peter warming himself, she looked intently at him and said, You too were with the Nazarene Jesus. But he denied it, saying, I neither know nor understand what you are talking about. So he went out into the outer court. Then the cock crowed. The maid saw him and began again to say to the bystanders, This man was one of them. Once again he denied it. A little later the bystanders said to Peter once more, Surely you are one of them, for you are too our Galilean. He began to curse and to swear, I do not know this man about whom you are talking. And immediately a cock crowed a second time. Then Peter remembered the word that Jesus had said to him, Before the cock grows twice, you will deny me three times. He broke down and wept. As soon as morning came, the chief priests with the elders and the scribes, that is, the whole Sanhedrin, held a council. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate questioned him, Are you the king of the Jews? He said to him in reply, You say so. The chief priests accused him of many things. Again Pilate questioned him, Have you no answer? See how many things they accuse you of? Jesus gave him no, an no further answer, so that Pilate was amazed. Now on the occasion of the feast, he used to release to them one prisoner whom they requested. A man called Barabbas was then in prison along with the rebels who had committed murder in a rebellion. The crowd came forward and began to ask him to do for them as he was accustomed. Pilate answered, Do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? For he knew that it was out of envy that the chief priests had handed him over. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have him release Barabbas for them instead. Pilate again said to them in reply, then what do you want me to do with the man you call the king of the Jews? They shouted again. Pilate said to them, Why? What evil has he done? They only shouted the louder. So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas to them, and after he had Jesus scourged, handed him over to be crucified. The soldiers led him away inside the palace, that is, the praetorium, and assembled the whole cohort. They clothed him in purple, and weaving a crown of thorns, placed it on him. They began to salute him with, and kept striking his head with a reed and spitting upon him. They knelt before him in homage, and when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the purple cloak, dressed him in his own clothes, and led him out to crucify him. They pressed into service a passerby, Simon, a Cyrenian, who was coming in from the country, the father of Alexander and Rufus, to carry his cross. They brought him to the place of Golgotha, which is translated place of the skull. They gave him wine drugged with myrrh, but he did not take it. Then they crucified him and divided his garments by casting lots for them to see what each should take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him, 
the inscription of the charge against him read, the King of the Jews. With him, they crucified two revolutionaries, one on his right and one on his left. Those passing by reviled him, shaking their heads and saying, Ah, you would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days. Save yourself by coming down from the cross. Likewise, the chief priests with the scribes mocked him among themselves and said, He saved others, he cannot save himself. Let the Christ, the King of Israel, come down now from the cross, that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with him also kept abusing him. At noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And at three o'clock, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, which is translated, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Some of the bystanders who heard it said, Look, he's calling Elijah. One of them ran, soaked a sponge with wine, put it on a reed, and gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait, let us see if Elijah comes to take him down. Jesus gave out a loud cry and breathed his last. The veil of the sanctuary was torn in two from top to bottom. When the centurion who stood facing him saw how he breathed his last, he said, Truly, this man was the Son of God. There were also women looking on from a distance. Among them were Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of the younger James and of Joseph, and Salome. These women had followed him when he was in Galilee and ministered to him. There were also many other women who had come up with him to Jerusalem. When it was already evening, since it was the day of preparation, the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, a distinguished member of the council, who was himself awaiting the kingdom of God, came and courageously went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Pilate was amazed that he was already dead. He summoned the centurion and asked him if Jesus had already died. And when he learned of it from the centurion, he gave the body to Joseph. Having bought a linen cloth, he took him down, wrapped him in the linen cloth, and laid him in a tomb that had been hewn out of the rock. Then he rolled a stone against the entrance to the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Joseph, watched where he was laid. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. With the liturgy of this Passion Sunday, we enter the holiest days of the year. Not simply as a time of historical reminiscence, but recognizing that we enter into the very mystery of the life and death of Christ. Had death not been conquered on the cross, all we could do is look back. Instead, we share the fruit of that sacrifice, the very body and blood of Christ, in this and every Eucharist. This is a week to remind us of what we take for granted or get used to, or what gets us lost in the crowd of everything else we have to do and everything else we care about. We're invited to follow the example of Jesus as described in the beautiful Philippian hymn, the second reading today, that Jesus did not deem equality with God something to be grasped at, rather, he emptied himself. He emptied himself. 
and took the form of a slave. The first question is, what will I empty for my life in this coming week that I might fully enter into the celebration and not just come to an event, but then let it linger, let it sink in. The passion proclaimed gives us the outline of everything celebrated in this week, that Passover meal in which he gave us the Eucharist and the priesthood, the invitation to watch and wait with him and not to grow weary or get used to what is so sacred that occurred in the Garden of the Agony, to be able to pray like Jesus when we wish something could be different, to express that, but then to finish each prayer as Jesus did, but not my will, but yours be done. From the cross, Jesus expressed every human emotion at one time or another in our life, where we feel like crying out, my God, my God, why have you abandoned me? But as we went on with the words of the psalmist, we realized that while he echoed that human emotion, the psalmist declares for us the divine reality. We are not abandoned. There was no abandonment that seemed more obvious than the cross. And where life seemingly was lost, their life was restored. We can draw so many parallels. This is not simply a story to be remembered, but a reality to be celebrated and a renewed reality to be lived as Easter and beyond finds us imitating what we celebrate in more practical and enthusiastic ways. We recognize all too often the tendency to be like Pilate. Did you catch what was said about him in the Passion? It's right in his face that Jesus has done nothing, that he's innocent. He goes on to say to the chief priest, it's out of envy that you're doing this. So it isn't as though he's clueless. But what happens? After all he knows, all he understands, all that he could or should do, we heard Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, handed Jesus over. How often satisfying the crowd, going with the flow, characterizes our life and weakens our witness. Brothers and sisters, let us accept the invitation to empty ourselves, that we might be lifted up, to die with him to those things that are not of God, that we might rise and live the abundant life that is his hope and desire for us all. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen seeking to have the Lord take us by the heart and lead us through the mysteries of this week, 
we bring our needs before him. For the church, as we live these holiest days of the year, may our deeper appreciation of the price of our salvation inspire us with greater zeal in sharing the good news with others. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the palms we accept and carry to be a sign of our commitment to allow Jesus to hold the first place in our hearts as the King we acclaim, not with cries of Hosanna, but with lives of fidelity. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who will become one of us through the sacraments of initiation at the Easter Vigil, here and in the Church Universal, may they be for us a living symbol of the life of the risen one that is stirring within us all. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the grace to reorder our priorities, quiet ourselves, and experience the grace of the liturgies in this coming week, both by joining in celebration as part of community and in our personal time set aside for prayer and reflection for a life-changing Holy Week for all of us, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all we bring to the cross and for healing for the sick, comfort for the dying, and eternal life for all the dead, especially Bruce Fournier, for whom this Holy Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. O God, our refuge and strength, source of every good gift, hear the prayers of your church and grant we obtain what we ask for in faith through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please join together in singing number 154, O Sacred Head Surrounded, number 154.
Pray, brethren, my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. Through the passion of your only begotten Son, O Lord, may our reconciliation with you be near at hand, so that though we do not merit it by our own deeds, yet by the sacrifice made once for all, we may feel already the effects of your mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ the Lord. For though innocent, he suffered willingly for sinners and accepted unjust condemnation to save the guilty, his death has washed away our sins, and his resurrection has purchased our justification. And so with all the angels we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. at work that the human race may become holy, just as you yourself are holy. Look, we pray upon your people's offerings. Pour out on them the power of your spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, in whom we too are your sons and daughters. Indeed, though we once were lost and could not approach you, you loved us with the greatest love. For your Son, who alone is just, handed himself over to death and did not disdain to be hailed for our sake to the wood of the cross. But before his arms were outstretched between heaven and earth to become the lasting sign of the covenant, he desired to celebrate the Passover with his disciples. As he ate with them, he took bread and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this, is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, knowing that he was about to reconcile all things in himself by his blood to be shed on the cross, he took the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine. And once more giving you thanks, he handed the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. With 
the mystery of faith. is our Passover and our surest peace. We celebrate his death and resurrection from the dead. And looking forward to his blessed coming, we offer you our faithful and merciful God, this sacrificial victim, who reconciles to you the human race. Look kindly, most compassionate Father, on those who unite to yourself by the sacrifice of your Son. Grant by the power of the Holy Spirit as they partake of this one bread, one chalice, they be gathered into the one body of Christ who heals every division. Be pleased to keep us always in communion of mind and heart, together with Francis, our Pope, and Peter, our Bishop. Help us work together for the coming of your kingdom until the hour when we stand before you, saints among the saints in the halls of heaven. With the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the Blessed Apostles, all the saints, and with our deceased brothers and sisters, whom we humbly commend to your mercy. Then, freed at last from the wound of corruption, made fully into a new creation, we shall sing to you with gladness the thanksgiving of Christ, who lives for all eternity. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And we offer a sign of peace. takes away the sins of the world, blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. 
Oh, 
Let us pray. Nourished with these sacred gifts, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that just as through the death of your Son you have brought us hope for what we believe, so by his resurrection you lead us to where you call, through Christ our Lord. Amen. If you to get a copy of the Parish Bulletin, there is an entire page that gives the outline of every day this week, particularly the Great Triduum, for Holy Thursday, Good Friday, and Easter Vigil. As we said last week, remember on Easter Sunday, none of the Masses are at the usual time. Also, Monday is the last time confessions are scheduled prior to Easter. They're being offered in the morning, at noontime, and at night. And since we're speaking of confession, I would like to commend in all my years here, this has been a remarkable year for that sacrament. There are a number of people in this parish for whom Easter has come early because they are experiencing that newness of life that comes from the humility that acknowledges and the power that raises us up. It has been a privilege to minister the sacrament of reconciliation, to see the fruitfulness of the urgings and the prayer, my intention throughout Lent is for a return to that sacrament. And I will continue to preach that and pray for that 
until I can't anymore. So I just want to thank so many of you. You have been a great encouragement to your pastor. Sometimes people wonder what people will think of me if I went to confession. I rejoice for you. I'm proud of you. And I admire you. Because what you are in the sight of God is more. You care more than what you appear in anybody else's eyes. So I commend you. And I give thanks to God for you. Be sure to read the bulletin carefully. All the upcoming opportunities, as well as in the Easter season, some tremendous opportunities to go deeper, are all outlined there. May we continue to pray for one another that this journey of Holy Week will be a journey of the heart, mind, and soul, that we might empty ourselves to be filled with all that God would give us. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. Look, we pray, O Lord, on this your family for whom our Lord Jesus Christ did not hesitate to be delivered into the hands of the wicked and submit to the agony of the cross, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go home in.